Hello, and thank you for joining another episode of the Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, hello. So, John, you you did this uh, topic all on your own. What do we got going on today? All right. Well, it's funny how things happen. So, I ran into a friend who I've known for a long time, and just out of nowhere, I found out she's she's done keto and that she's attempting to do keto carnivore. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you have to come and let us talk to you. So, uh, Melissa, well, another person you stumbled on. I stumble Maybe. upon people all the time. I, I, I yeah, I've never met somebody who's a who's a stranger. So anyway, I'd like to introduce Melissa. Melissa, welcome to the show. Hello. Hey. So. I'm trying to think back about how long we've known each other, but it's been forever as far as I was concerned, like 10 years or something crazy like that, right? Yeah, probably. Maybe more. <laughs> time flies. Isn't it, isn't it funny how in that time we've never once talked about nutrition or anything? So I was kind of blindsided when you said that you had been keto before. So when did you, uh, when did you uh, try keto? Uh, it's probably been about two years now. So I went keto and had some good luck and then had to go on some medication for a while and I pretty much gained back everything that I had taken off at first, of course, is what happens when you go on some some types of medication. And then I got off that medication and got real serious again and then took off another 25 pounds when I got back into it at the beginning of this year real serious. Um, but I'm a slow loser, so. <laughs> a slow loser? I, was, uh, <laughs> I am. I'm a slow loser. And I got into it for weight loss, not necessarily for any other of the wonderful health benefits that, you know, people are having, you know, from it. It was, um, my main focus was the weight loss. Now, you said that other people were having, did, did you, when you did keto, did you feel like uh, that uh, you did have some of the other benefits? Um, yeah, I think so. But like I said, I was pretty focused on the weight loss. Um, and I know that long term, you know, keto is supposed to be great for, um, you know, if the cancer prevention, um, it's good for, you know, Alzheimer's, dementia. Um, so there's, you know, and, and even the diabetes. So, you know, there's and there's a lot of that that runs in my family. So those were just side benefits. But like I said, my main focus was um, the weight loss in the short term, in the long term, if those, you know, uh, other benefits happen, great, you know. Right. So what made you switch to to look into carnivore? Because carnivore is, I don't know if you'd call it a subset, but but it, it is it is not keto in my mind it anyway. Is, it is not. It's, a, it's more of a focusing in from keto. Um, and the real reason, honestly, was I was hungry. Um, in order for me to continue to lose, and like I said, I was a slow loser, um, I had to keep restricting calories. And regardless of, of, yeah, and regardless of how much fat you were taking in, if you still have to restrict your calories, eventually you're going to be hungry. Um, huh. so with carnivore, yeah, normally, it was, yeah, normally you shouldn't have to do that. So I, I am surprised. Yeah, I, I was of the, um, a part of the other faction that has to do that. Um, most people don't. Is it like we're part of the other here? group? <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. Um, you know, it's like there were some people that were very lucky and lost really quickly and didn't have to restrict anything, didn't really have to count their macros. Um, I, on the other hand, had to monitor everything extremely closely, restrict my calories, um, drive myself crazy. Um, so, with and you the felt keto. like car- the carnivore would be a way that you wouldn't have to deal with that? Exactly. Um, you know, it was basically eat until you are full, don't track, um, and, you know, you're supposed to see results. Uh, I've been doing this about a month, and I have not lost anything, but I have not gained anything um, either, because there are a lot of people that will gain when they first start uh, carnivore, uh, so, and it's because of the body healing. 
So can you kind of highlight, because we talk a lot about keto in here, so I think our listeners mm-hmm. will understand that side of it. Um, but we haven't really talked a whole lot about carnivore. Um, I've sampled in it um, myself. But can you kind of give a maybe a high overview of what the differences are between your when you were doing keto and, and now that you're doing carnivore? Well, carnivore is pretty simple. Um, you eat from the animal kingdom. I mean, if it had to have a mother, it had to have a face. Um, and they and and for the hardcore, they do beef and water, which sounds very very restrictive. Um, and I think that's a little too restrictive for me. I still drink coffee. I still drink tea. I will drink you know like a Perrier water, even some of the flavor, just as long as there's no sweetener in it. Um, but uh, I and I also will eat pork, uh, bologna, hot dogs, liverwurst, you know that kind of stuff. Um, some people are just way more hardcore about it, but it's it's a very simple uh, concept. You know, you eat to your full, and you eat meat, and you drink water. Do you do you eat any cheese, butter, anything like that? Um, you can. I cannot because dairy stalls me. Okay. So I can have some. I do have some butter. I will eat. You know, the grass fed Kerrygold butter. Um, usually in my eggs, because I will have eggs as well. Um, But I have to restrict as far as the cheese and the heavy whipping cream. Because it stalls me out. (laughs) Okay, so I was going to ask. So it really just is all around stalling. So it sounds like you're really strict then. I Yeah, I I tend to be. um, You know, and I still will get a craving or two for something sweet. Um, but I try to fight it as much as possible. So, you know, and try to, you know, like sometimes I will get like a heavy whipping cream and whip it up with just a little bit of like sweetener, uh, like a swerve so that it's, it's still better for you than, you know, your, your, you know, sweet and lows or whatever you're going to, you know, chemical altered stuff. But, um, yeah, I, you know, try to keep that to a minimum so that it doesn't spike the insulin because it's still about spiking insulin and having that response. So, but yeah, I try to stay pretty strict. With the carnivore, do you follow similar macros, um, keeping the fat to a higher percentage than the protein, or how does that work with with the... I do, yeah. I do. I'm going to have to experiment that a little bit because there are some, even within carnivore, that are, are you have to, and, and here again, some, some say you have to restrict your calories and you have to have the um, fat lower than your protein intake so that your body uses the fat that you have on your body. So, and you have that within keto as well. I've seen that in keto as well. So, um I, I tend to keep my fat higher than my protein. So do you have a, like a like a website or or do, or like I know there's a lot of information on the internet and sometimes you some of it's sketchy. So did you do you like have a go to place now where you've looked into it and you're following those type of principles? I do. I follow on Facebook the group women uh, women on carnivore. And um, there's also another one called Keto Carnivore. I can't remember the, the name uh, right off the top of my head. Um, but there's two groups that I follow that are carnivore. Um, I try not to uh, follow the ones that, that were – some people are pretty darn mean, you know, and they get a little snarky and militant about everything. So, you know, some of that gets old when you're out there on Facebook. So the two groups that I happen to be in seem to be pretty good groups, and they, they impart – pretty good information and like I said within those groups there there are the diehards and then there are some that are you know 90 percent 99 percent carnivore they're still you know eking in a few keto things but I found that most people come from keto to carnivore that's what I've seen the majority of is that a recent thing or when when did you say you start you started doing this just within the last month but when did you start researching it (laughs) I probably started about a month before that and just started hearing more and more about it and seeing it pop up more and more within, you know, 
the the keto groups that I was in and Facebook and stuff like that. And, um, you know, checking out some, some videos on YouTube, um, Dr. Ken Berry, um, he had started trying some carnivore, uh, and he's pretty good. I mean, I, the information I've heard from him so far is pretty good. I know some people probably don't like him. Um, Sean Baker is one that is a hardcore carnivore, um, and his information is, is pretty good, too. Well, we would be in line with some of those people because we've met some of them. So to- totally agree there. So what, uh, so one day you decide, so I guess it was a month, you researched it, and then you said, hey, I'm going to be, are, would you even call yourself keto carnivore or just carnivore? I would probably just swing a little more toward carnivore just because I, uh, okay. you know, but you're... that's. But, uh, yeah, but I'm still in ketosis. I still check every now and then. And I just use, and I know, you know, they're not accurate, but I just use the urine strips to check every now and then just to see if I am or I'm not. I don't care about the levels. You know? Yeah, we've we've talked about how the accuracy on those before. So to- totally agree with you there. Um, the So what were your first steps then? You just like clear like any vegetable out of your house and throw away all your green beans and then go to the store and buy steaks? <laughs> Pretty much. Um I was not a huge veggie eater to begin with. I had swung a little more toward the carnivore in keto, um, you know, minus, you know, the cheese. Uh, But I tended to be a little more toward the carnivore side when I was in keto. And that was, you know, so I thought, well, the transition should be fairly easy. I mean, you know, if I went out to eat, I would eat, you know, the steamed vegetables or, you know, the salad or whatever, you know, came with it. Now I just tell them to leave it off. So, yeah, don't even bother yeah. bringing me a salad. Yeah, it's like don't even, don't even, don't even tempt me. I don't need it. You know, I'm not going to eat it. I'm better off not looking at it. <laughs> Save your lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> so, what were your challenges then? Is it is it the, um, was that your only ch- your biggest biggest challenge was don't even let me look at it. Um, yeah, for the eating out, sometimes, you know, you feel a little strange when you're like, no, I'm just going to eat that burger without a bun. <laughs> yeah, I think, and I no, think... no tomato, no nothing, just, you know, salt and pepper. So, yeah, that's like, I, uh, I'm going to wrap myself out and say I, my guilty pleasure is going to the Hardee's and getting one of those monster burgers, but they wrap it right? in lettuce. I just, I, right. Oh man, I something about that lettuce. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it, uh, it's, since uh, you you haven't listened to some of the shows and stuff because you didn't even know I was doing this, I'll just go ahead and tell you that I'm I'm one of the veggie guys, so I tend to You're always the veggie have. Veggie guy. Yeah, I'm a. I came from the prim, the primal blueprint, so you know I'm a. Vegetables have been like right. woven in life, so this was mind blowing to me. Whereas. I don't think on the other side of the table you you couldn't you would be like totally okay with it. I'm I would. Eat, I, I don't. I, I don't yeah, care I would, about that. I would crave a salad. I feel like. But anyway. Oh yeah, I don't think that mm-hmm. has actually ever happened to me. In my life. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. agree. No, I've never never craved cauliflower. I've never craved bro- broccoli or lettuce. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I did start. Oh, yeah, man, I did I'm start serious. carnivore. Um, now my downfall is cheese. I have to be honest. That was my hardest mm-hmm. one. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't cheese come from an animal though? It does. It, it does. On, oh, this goes back to your, your definition of carnivore, right? Okay. So oh, you're I think right. that's what she was alluding to, that there are some variations of it, same as keto, right? Gotcha. Um, I did stay with the cheese just because I know <laughs> I have cheese. a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's better with cheese. That's right. But, like, my right. my thing actually was because I had planted a garden, and although mm. I don't have a very extensive uh, vegetable, my p- tomatoes were ripening and my uh, spaghetti squash. So I stopped doing carnivore so I could eat those, and my plan is right. once the garden dies, I'm going to go back to carnivore in the winter. <laughs> yeah. you said that because... I seriously had that same conversation with my mother. I, yeah. I was talking to her about keto because we were, long story short, we were in a car ride and I forced her to listen to some of my podcasts. And uh, <laughs> she's like, I get it. How would you not have vegetables? I was like, well, I'm actually thinking about doing it. She's like, she thinks I'm nuts, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, and uh, she literally said, well, well, when would you do that? And I was like, well, once the garden dies yeah. and I don't have those temptations. Well, mine isn't so much temptations. Mine was 
I was kind of mad that I went that through you all went the to trouble. All <laughs> so really so I'm going to eat it. Fine. Fine. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And, you know, like my my parents just, or my mother, I should say, brought, just brought me down some tomatoes. <laughs> I was like, thanks, Mom. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to find people to, take, to give them to now. <laughs> You know, wow. you just don't want to hurt their feelings, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, I understand. All right, so some you you up for some personal questions that you? Okay. All right, so uh, you switch to meat only. How does everything you know come out stool wise? Everything, everything comes out great. I don't have any issues. <laughs> well, it's in my mind. Well, I can't lie. No. Every Dude, we've been bred. I, like, everyone tells us fiber, fiber this, fiber that. And no, I know, but everyone I know that does that has no issue. No, no everyone issues. Um, and I, I know that, uh, and it, actually it's probably less frequent because you tend to use the bulk of everything. Um, there's no leftover waste, so to speak. Gotcha. So that... Insoluble it's a fiber. More that you yeah, use. exactly. But I think the two of us need to gang up on John and make a challenge. Oh, you know I don't follow <laughs> challenges. He does it at least thirty days. I have yet to make mayonnaise. I know. Do you think I can I pull a month of this off? Well, that's why I'm trying to recruit some friends. Maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> multiple. Strength the number. Hit him from every side. <laughs> make him All accountable. Right, well. Yeah. Well, Cause, uh, because he is one. Well, first of all, I do have a whole cow, half of a cow in my fridge. You do. So I have a lot of stuff, and I've but in the just, I've been really loving the sous vide. I but remember, lie. in the beginning, you were resistant to follow the moderate protein. You had True. the mindset that it was. True. I was more of yeah. I was more of a one gram per body weight kind yeah. of guy. So I think that I still took branched chain amino acids then, and because I didn't right. want my and body I, to be I starved. You. Oh. <laughs> Slowly, I'm I, working yet. Yeah. Right. Well, I know I do get asked, you know, about the whole vitamin. You know, how how you know where where are you getting your you know how do you get vitamin C? Well, you don't need vitamin C as much when you're not eating the vegetables yep. and the fiber and stuff like that. So all of all of the 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 good vitamins are coming in through, like the beef. Uh, there's vitamin K. I mean, all those vitamins that you need are coming in through the meat. It's just you don't need as much vitamin C when you're not eating all of those other vegetables. And I I did I did some research on that because that was the one thing that was really bugging me like in the back of my head it was that whole vitamins and minerals thing and and mm-hmm. I I was shocked to find out that they just didn't list the vitamins and minerals and meat because they just didn't check them back then yeah. so I was a little surprised to find out that but do you take any electrolyte supplements then because I've been I I do take a magnesium I do take magnesium um, I'm prone to leg cramps at night. So leg and foot cramps. Um, and actually, since I've been on carnivore, it has not been as bad as when I was on so keto. Compared to, you know, I know this is all just kind of experience-based, but compared to, like, the person who normally sits, like, next to you, how, do you, how, how would you rate your average salting? Do you tend to salt more or oh, less? Yeah. And you you more. tend to start salt more? Yeah. Yeah, we were Yeah, we we were we were sitting with uh somebody at, at KetoCon at lunch oh, can, and we were talking you can Call him out. Dave Feldman. Okay, fine. <laughs> you can call him out. Uh and I was shocked at it, like he's like, "No, I just do it till I don't till it's too much." And I and I was like I don't know, I considered he, that a small He did it so much that you literally could not see the top of his meat any oh longer. My. There was Salt on it. Well, he's probably making up for it. He's just so happy you had salt in your in your purse. Yeah, that's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, quite humorous in general. That is true. <laughs> All right. Well, I now do we're... salt a lot, but yeah, it's it's um, and I I did the pink Himalayan salt. I've got the real salt. I've got you know just regular you know straight old table salt. I'll use whatever. So yeah. Well, I, I've been, uh, yeah, I, I'm currently doing Baltic myself. I do have right. the pink. 
But, uh, okay, well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm actually glad we had this conversation. It seems so before we get intrigued. off of what you're eating, do you, or the vitamins and minerals, do you eat any organ meat? Oh, good question. So, what was that again? Uh, do you eat any organ meat? No, I do not. Or, okay. A lot of people do. I am not big on the organ meat. <laughs> Well, so something weird uh, we, about it for me. I'm, you know, the typical, you know, I didn't grow up that way. I didn't grow up on the farm where you had to use every stinking part of everything, you know. So I just me. have not gotten into the liver and, you know, the gizzard and all that kind of stuff. So I'm pretty yeah. much a ground beef steak. Uh, I'll do pork burger, pork sausage, um, some chicken. And I did try to find the chicken thighs, you know, the boneless, skinless, not skinless, but the boneless chicken thighs, um, which are kind of hard to find. Um, so, you know, and, and like That's I said, I will do liverwurst and bologna and hot dogs too. Huh? That's because people are, right now it's trendy to have chicken breasts. So for some reason, thighs without bones in them is, are a little hard to find right now. Yeah, exactly. So, and I do the lunch meat um, just because there's a higher content of fat, you know, in that lunch meat. So you get a pretty good ratio of your fats higher than, than the protein that's in the lunch meat. You have so, to check and make sure there's not a whole bunch of fillers and stuff for the, for the lunch meat. Yeah, I, I tend to, and I mean, not to drop name brands or anything, but, but Oscar Mayer tends to be my favorite. So I just, that's what I grew up on. <laughs> did you, in all of your research, did you research anything on nitrates? Um, no, I really didn't because uh, I didn't worry about the nitrates in my bacon when I was on keto. Um, right. I it was just, it's just too hard to find uh, a bacon that doesn't have all that in it, let alone a lunch meat. So I don't worry about it. I figure I'm eating the best that I can within my budget with what I have to find. Wow. That sounds like something I've heard said before. (laughs) (laughs) The whole time she's been talking, I'm like, this sounds like me on the phone. (laughs) That's right. You two, now now, now you have a new person, a new co-host. I just got ousted. (laughs) Have your own keto carnivore offshoot because... I'll have a hard time doing it. <laughs> I think you would find it easier than what you realize. Um, there's not a lot of thought that goes into it. And, you know, even your, your, your shopping, your grocery shopping, you know, you go around to the meat section and you're pretty much done. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so, I don't even have to go around the perimeter of the store. I just go to the meat counter. And honestly, just, I don't yeah. want to go to the grocery yeah. store anymore. I just go to the butcher. Right, and you already have you know, it at home. Right, you've got half a cow. I mean, if you have to pick up eggs and maybe a little cheese to get you through. Oh no, I get I know? get farm eggs delivered to my house. I'm spoiled. Well, see, see, look at you. You got half a cow and eggs. Come on. Yeah, you you have the perfect setup. You have to leave home to be carnivore. I'll just fire that salt uh, the the, the uh, sous vide up and just keep exchanging out packs of meat, huh? There <laughs> All right. Well, I'm intrigued. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want on the air say I'll do anything because. <laughs> right. Well, we'd hate I, you to I commit too far. It's been two years, and I still have yet to do that. So, but uh, oh wait, can you have days? Yeah, so many questions for as easy as this is supposed to be. I when I did it, I did do mayonnaise mainly because well, it's avocado oil, and that's probably not carnivore, but the only other ingredient is an egg, so yeah. it isn't like they're Right, sweeter. well, and there's um, some people that are so hardcore, they take their bacon grease and make bacon A's. Um, to me, that sounds horrible. I would rather huh. go without. I don't know. That sounds intriguing to me. Myself. I have attempted it. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, does it have pieces of bacon in the mayonnaise? Because that would be yeah, fantastic. Pieces. Yeah. Huh. But I am currently. It just sounds. Gross. But I couldn't. I couldn't have a keto brick. I couldn't have any. Like every once in a while, I'm just like, oh, it's the end you of the can day. Do it for thirty days. True. Yeah. Anybody can do anything for thirty days. Yeah. Yeah. True. Right. I probably. Except me. Days. I couldn't last thirty days because. 
All right. Well, I'm intrigued. intrigued. <laughs> so, well, I'm intrigued. So, Melissa, I appreciate you just sharing your your thoughts on the on the matter. I mean, I know we, I kind of blindsided you with this interview, so I appreciate you being a good sport about it. Sure. <laughs> and uh, th- th- anything that you want to leave us with, or anything that I, I just we kind of left out. Um, I don't. I think we pretty much touched on everything, really. And it just like seems I said, too my, simple. my ex- yeah, it, it's very, very simple. It seems very simple. Um, and I think, well, like the hardest part for, I will say, for women, I think women don't do quite as well on carnivore just because we're women. Um, and we have a whole lot of other issues going on over, you know, men. I mean, the hormones and change, you know, the, the you know, going through the change and all that kind of stuff for some women. Um, and the childbearing years and all that kind of stuff. But most women will gain weight at first when they start on carnivore, but huh. it's a healing process. Uh, so a lot of times you will gain weight because it's, your body's healing from all the years of calorie restriction, the uh, the standard American diet, or is that, call is that the more American about? Diet. Sorry, I kind of interrupted you there. Oh, that's um, okay. Uh, is that more because of the they they have damaged metabolism? Yes, I think it's a damaged metabolism, a damaged system. I know a lot of women have uh, the autoimmune um, problems, you know, the PCOS, the, you know, a lot of people are, are the diabetic. Um, and, you know, so they've got a lot of things. You should really listen to our show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, oh, man, I almost want to admit that I'll try it. but I- See, I think you need to commit to a 30-day challenge. And, and again, wait, wait. maybe we both do it at the same time. Wait and then we can compare. Yeah, once the garden's dead <laughs> and, and my labor is no longer an issue in my garden, I think the two of us should do it at the same time because then we can compare. Because that would be, you are a huge vegetable eater and I am not. Yeah. But I have all of the female hormone issues that you clearly would not <laughs> So I think it would be a good comparison. I still, when I don't have a lot of vegetables, I still like take like spirulina or or like have a green smoothie shaky kind of thingy. So this would be really weird for me. Yeah, I think I, I think you I think you should commit to it. I think we should Dang. set a date and do a thirty day challenge. Both of us do it because it will be a challenge for me. <clears throat> Like, I've already tried it. It is a challenge. Well, maybe we'll have to rope Melissa in. You there can you be go. our ring leader. Yeah, our our coach. <laughs> our coach. <laughs> Slave driver. All right. So, just leave us with, what's your, is your biggest trick or the biggest thing that helped you the most was the lunch meat? Oh, we we lost her. Oops. We lost her. All right. Well, we'll consider. Well, good. Maybe she doesn't know that that we committed. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as long as she doesn't listen to our podcast and doesn't call right back in. Oh, maybe that's why my pocket's buzzing. <laughs> She's trying to get a hold of me. <laughs> well, anyway, let's go ahead and end the show there. And, All right. Uh, she's not on here to give us her number one tip. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say that the two of us need to do it. Uh, we'll set a date. Our next show, we'll come up with a date. And the two of us will do a 30-day carnivore challenge and do comparisons. We'll actually do... You realize this is going directly against your dry mix. I know. Okay. Which is fine. I mean, I don't need it. It's a special anyway. occasion thing anyway, so all right, fine. Yeah. All right. We need the to gauntlet has been thrown, so let's go from there. And uh, so... Put together some criteria and actually go through an ex- in one experiment and do comparisons. I think oh, we should do it. Is we're going to do like an embody and everything? We should, yeah. I'm going to do for one anyway, and you probably are too, because you had one about the same time I did. Okay. So, yeah. Dang it. I, All right. I, I hate committing to a challenge. I know you do. That's why I'm going to make you do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So, um, reach out to us on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, don't forget, we also have JoJo's Kitchen, so... Start following that at JoJo's Dry Mix. And the link's going to be in the show notes. Yeah, I'll put the links in the show, but it's JoJo's Dry Mix at Gmail. um, And then JoJo's, 
kitchen.com. Um, All right. Is, is Q&A next up? Yes. Q&A is next up. So don't forget, if you got questions, email them in ketoniancorner at gmail.com. Yep. We're, we're a little short on some questions. And please don't ask us about carnivore yet, because obviously we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys.